Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Late Show. My first guest tonight is the wonderful actor, writer, and producer behind the shows like Never Have I Ever, The Mindy Project, and The Office. Please welcome back to A Late Show, Mindy Kaling. Mindy, so lovely to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you virtually. Yeah, I'll take it any way I can. I see most people virtually these days, other than just like my, my family. That's about it. Are you? How mm -hmm. is your bubble going? Um, is it unsympathetic to say I've been having a great bubble? No, no. The fact that you have a bubble is all you need to say. Everything within the bubble is, is perfectly fine for that to be good, as long as you are keeping yep. a bubble. My hermetically sealed bubble has been nice, I have to admit. And and I understand yeah, that it's I understand that it's it's actually growing because I I got something I rarely get these days which is some good news, which if you wouldn't mind sharing with our audience I think they'd be thrilled to find out um, something extraordinary that nobody knows up until this moment. Yes, I'm it's it's I'm telling it for the first time now it feels so strange but um, I had a I give birth to a baby boy on September third. No one even knew you were pregnant. I know. I know. It's like this is news to a lot of people. It's true. Well, congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you. That was Thanks. wonderful. So, uh, 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 you said baby boy. Did you say baby boy? Baby boy. Okay. Do we have a name yet? Yes. Oh, yes. He has a name. His name is Spencer. Yes. Spencer. I forgot the most important part of it. Spencer Kaylee. Lovely. So, wait. Thank and you. and and how old is your daughter at this point? She's almost three. Almost three. And how is she receiving? How was she receiving? Because uh, my my daughter was uh, two and a half when her little brother was born, and at a certain point, she said, "Send him back." How? Yeah. How is how is she receiving Spencer? She was uh, very ambivalent at first. I would say to be generous, she was um, really worried about um, her toys getting taken. That's that's uh, a reasonable fear. Yeah. And so that, that happened, and then I think in her mind, because she's also two and a half, almost three, she thought that it would be another child that was her same size. But then she, you know, then she was delighted when he arrived home with me at the hospital, and he was just a blob who couldn't take her toys. So she's she's a huge fan now that she's met him. How how, how did you keep the secret? People people <laughs> care. People follow what goes on in Mindy Kaling's life. How did you? How, how did no one know this was coming? Well, no one saw me. It felt weird to be, you know, there was so much going on and so much heartbreak in the world that it felt strange to go out of my way to, you know, shine a light on some giant health information. Do you know? I did think it was, it was, no one really saw me, except one time I did go to buy my daughter, like my, my son, my new student, my son some toys. And I got caught by uh, paparazzi photos caught me. And I thought, oh, okay, well, then now this is clearly they're going to know because I was eight months pregnant. Is that what this is? Some, they gave me these photographs here. Is this from the Daily Mail? Yes. Yeah. So they ran this photo of me, and I look very pregnant, I would say. But yeah, I think that that's a pregnant were, person. That's a pregnant. They were very, I think this is what's funny. They were too nervous to claim that I was pregnant, that it was almost more insulting. They were like, oh yeah, Mindy Kaling just looks like this. What, is, what did they say? Were they say like, Mindy Kaling out on the it, town? Yeah, they were like out on the town, at a kid's toy store buy. I think they just said I was buying toys for my older kid. But I was so insulted. I mean like, that, if you're not pregnant, you need to go to the doctor if you look like that. Right? Um, I, I'm not gonna jump on that train. Thank you for inviting me on it though. I think you Comment look fantastic. On my body. You look fantastic. <laughs> you look Thank you. fantastic. That was really diplomatic of you. Does it feel different to have a son? Because having obviously having a baby when you haven't had a baby it just changes everything, like your view of the world. But now a having a second child and having a son instead of a daughter is that is that a different vibe for you? Well, I don't know, Stephen. I don't know with you and your wife if you feel this way because you have both, but. I think that saying my son feels very formal. It's like, I don't know whether it's because I've seen so many war movies and documentaries, but I don't know, saying like my daughter feels contemporary and of the moment, but saying a son feels so old timey. Like 
I just feel like if my daughter were to come home from spring break, I would be like, oh yeah, my daughter just came home from Cancun, but I would be like, my son returned from overseas. <laughs> I don't know. It feels more formal to me. I don't know why. Sure. I don't know. I, having been a son, it feels perfectly natural to me. Just for someone to call you a son. Yeah, or just no, to hear the word son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I got to say, uh, this is one plus, is that if you, when they're a little bit older and you talk to them, it's weird to say, now daughter, that's weird. But to go, yeah. listen, son. That, that has got a real stab to it. Listen, son, it's got, it's got punch. That's good, I like that. Now you've, got a, you've got an essay collection out now. What is the name of this essay collection? Nothing like I imagined, except for sometimes. Except for sometimes. In it, you write that raising your daughter made you more connected to your Hindu faith. Were you, were you, were you raised uh, with, um, you know, sort of the ceremonies of the Hindu calendar? Um. Not at all, really. So I was born here, and I'm Indian American, and my parents met in Africa. So, like, we weren't raised with the, and they're from completely different parts of India, speak different languages. And so we weren't really raised with a lot of religion. But mm -hmm. um, one thing I write about in my book is I talk about my faith and how, you know, my mother passed away, and that actually triggered um, me thinking about my faith in any way. And then when I had my daughter, um, we had to go through the ceremony called a mandan, which is a Hindu ceremony, which is when you shave your daughter's, your, your child's uh, hair within the first year of their life. And, because, and why do you do that? You do that because um, for Hindus, the hair that you're born with belongs to your past life. Wow. So, and my daughter was born with a lot of hair. So she had a lot of her past life with her. So we had to shave it and you, this is what was tricky. You have to do it in the first year or then you have to wait till her third year. And I thought when she's three years old, I think it'll be a little bit more traumatizing for, sure. me to have to, for her to be bald. Yeah. So I decided to do it when she was 10 months old. And um, I was like, oh, this will be great. It was nothing like, you know, it's not like a bris or something where I'll be like cutting skin. Sure. But the way she reacted to it was like it was 10 times worse than a circumcision. <laughs> like oh my was, gosh. So she, she, hated it so much. she did not want to let go. Of the past she did not life. want to let go to her past life. She must have had a really good ride last time around. Yeah, she she must have. But anyway, now, did but, you you had this ceremony, right? I had the ceremony myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's a good laughter. look. That's a good look. I think it's a bad sign when the host laughs at a photo preceding showing a photo. Of it's adorable. Face. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. So anyway, thank you, for thank you for being adorable. <laughs> but I felt like, I don't know if you feel this way when you go through, you know, doing cere ceremonies in your faith, but sure. it made me think about my mother. And it, in fact, because she had done that to me. And so, you know, like raising kids, I was just triggered. I've triggered constantly by memories of my childhood. And that made me feel really connected with her because she was the one that decided I should get a Munden as a, as a baby. A absolutely. I mean, the, the, there are so many different. I, I, I certainly perceived a lot of the ceremonies of my childhood differently when my own children went through them and saw them as sort of gifts from my parents to me, like a cult cultural gifts, like little, almost like little love poems uh, to how life can be lived or how we can connect to our community. I, I really, they all became very important to me. And let's just sit in silence for a moment. Let's just sit in silence here for a moment and just enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy that moment of connection that you and I just had. <laughs> Shh, don't ruin it. Don't ruin it by talking. BJ Novak is, we're back. We're, we're our continuing coverage of Mindy Kaling. I want to warn our affiliates. BJ Novak is godfather to both of your kids. Now, Traditionally, the godfather plays a role in spiritual development and education of the child. Is he is he pitching in for, you know, was he at the Munden? He was at the Munden, but nothing more than that. No, it's hard because, you know, the, the concept of a godfather is a Christian thing. Oh, yeah, I was going right? to say, like, yeah. It's a Christian thing, so I think it's, it's as you described it. And so he's Jewish. My kids are Hindu. And so um, maybe he was, maybe he was not the right person to pick, actually. <laughs> Uh, Mindy, lovely to see you again. 
Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for sharing my news. And thank you for sharing the news. We're honored to inform the world here on The Late Show. Well, her essay collection, Nothing Like I Imagined Except for Sometimes, is available now on Amazon. Mindy Kaling, everybody. We'll be right back with former CIA director John Brennan. It's a natural match. You, John Brennan, <laughs> perfect.